In this video, I will show you the proof of Dilbert theorem and explain it in a very easy way. Well, the statement of Dilbert theorem says, let P be a finite poset, partial ordered set. Then the minimum number small m of disjoint chains which together contain all elements of P, that means the minimum size of a chain cover, is equal to the maximum number capital M of elements in an anti chain of P. Well, what is a chain cover? If this is a poset and these are its elements, if it is not visible, okay, if these are its elements, then what is the chain cover for this poset P? See? If these are distinct uh, disjoint chains, then these together form a chain cover because these are chains and these together covers the poset P. Okay. Now what is small m? Small m is small m is size of disjoint chain cover um, size of minimum disjoint chain cover and capital M is size of maximum anti chain now what is an anti chain any any two elements in an anti chain are not comparable Okay, so first we will prove that small m is greater or equal to capital M and then the other way around, that is small m is lesser or equal to capital M. Now I claim that small m is greater or equal to capital M is quite trivial. Why? Because in any anti-chain um, P, okay, let me show you. I will show you here. Uh, if this is a chain in P and suppose there are two, el two distinct elements uh, x1 and x2 belonging to an anti-chain A which lies in this single chain. This one is x1 and this one is x2. Then what happens? That means these two elements of an anti-chain are comparable which is impossible by definition of an anti-chain. So, any chain um, co can contain at most one element from an anti chain. So, this one is trivial. Now, to prove the other way around, that means small m is lesser or equal to capital M, we will use strong induction method. Now, let's consider the base case that is when size of P is 0. Then everything is trivial, we have nothing, nothing left to prove. Even when size of P is 1, then also we can say that everything is trivial. Everything is trivially true. So, we will assume size of P greater than 1. Now, we will consider a maximal chain C. Suppose this is our post set and this is one maximal chain C. This one. Now, what is the meaning of maximal chain? Maximal chain is a chain such that we can, uh, there is no other element left in this post set P such that if that element is added to this chain, it will, const uh, it will form a bigger chain. And we will take the set P minus C. If the set P, P minus C contains M minus 1 elements, then we can say um, we are done. Why? Because we will apply our induction hypothesis. But what if the size of, uh, what if the, in this set P minus C contains a chain, uh, contains an anti-chain of size M? Well, we take an anti-chain of size M. Now make sure that any anti-chain in P minus C cannot be of size more than 
capital M. Why? Because we assumed in our theorem that the maximal anti-chain in P uh, has size at most capital M. So we consider this anti-chain as A1 up to A capital M. Suppose these are the anti-chain elements A1, A2 up to AM. Okay. Now what to do next? Well, we will consider, we will construct a set S minus such that X belongs to P. Remember, this is X belongs to P, not P minus C. X belongs to this whole P. Such that there exists some I with X less or equal to AI for some I. Okay. That means if this is an anti chain, then we, constr uh, we construct set with these elements. Well, these elements may contain elements of this chain also. Elements of this chain also and so on. Okay. Now this set S minus cannot contain the maximal element of C. Why? Because if, let's suppose the maximal element of this chain be X, um, suppose this is Y and it is contained in S minus, that means what? There exists some I such that Y is less or equal to AI and this means what? If we include AI in this chain, we can have a bigger chain which is not true by our assumption since C is a maximal chain. So there is a, there arises a contradiction that means Y does not belong to S minus. Then the size of this set S minus is lesser than size of this set S minus is lesser than strictly lesser than P. Right? Um, size of P then we will use induction hypothesis on the size uh, on the size of the set here our size of uh, here our set is s minus which is strictly lesser than the size of p um, the size of which is strictly lesser than size of p then we can use induction hypothesis and deduce that s minus can be expressed as disjoint chain cover um, union of disjoint chains union of s i minus for i is equal to 1 to m okay and these s i are disjoint chains similarly we can use the same argument for s plus now what is s plus S plus is these elements. These elements can include elements of this chain also. Elements of this chain also and so on. So similarly we can write union of i is equal to 1 to m si plus where, S, uh, where si pluses are si minus here where si pluses are the same that means disjoint chains and remember in this case of s plus it does not contain the minimal element of c and not the maximal element and then the size of s plus will be lesser than strictly lesser than size of p because it does not contain the minimal element of c now we claim that any element of s uh, of s plus does not belong to s minus that means any element lying here does not belong to s minus and similarly uh, any element lying here does not belong to s plus let's suppose x belongs to s my si uh, let's suppose x belongs to s minus that means x belongs to si minus for some i 
and since it is SI minus then X is uh, then X is less than or equal to AI if this X also belongs to S plus that means what X belongs to some uh, SJ plus then it will imply what X is greater or equal to some AJ now this and this inequalities together imply that AJ is less or equal to X is less or equal to AI that means AJ and AI are comparable which is a contradiction because they are uh, elements of an anti-chain then S plus intersection S minus is equal to phi um, not exactly phi S plus intersection S minus is equal to A because they contain um, they both contain elements of this uh, elements of the anti-chain and no other elements and now for each i we will join this si minus and si plus and call it ti let ti is equal to si minus union si plus for each i i is equal to 1 2 up to capital m so each ti becomes what a chain in p they form disjoint chains why because each si minus and each s uh, each si minus are disjoint mutually disjoint and si pluses are also mu mutually disjoint why because we have deduced that using our induction hypothesis on s minus and s plus respectively so um, ti's are disjoint chains now we will claim that ti's form a chain cover that is union of ti i is equal to 1 to m is equal to p how let any element lying in c is left and does not contain in any of ti's then what happens that means there exists an element um, call it u in C which is not comparable to any of the AIs by definition of S minus which is not comparable to any of the AIs that means we can get an anti-chain A bar is equal to A union U and since we have assumed that size of A is capital M so size of A bar will be what capital M plus 1 which breaches the condition of our theorem so this is not possible that means union of all ti's is equal to p that means ti's are a chain cover for p and since the size of minimum chain cover for p is small m that means uh, m is lesser or equal to capital m because size of this chain cover is capital m so we have deduced small m less or equal to m so together we can say that small m is equal to capital m or this proves our theorem thank you for watching